It was Australia's most deadly home fire ever. 11 people, eight of them children, killed as an inferno engulfed the home in which they were sleeping. Two families, together for a cousin's sleepover, ripped apart by tragedy. Three years after that fatal fire at Slacks Creek, south of Brisbane, the scars remain raw for the survivors. And disturbingly, for the rest of us, authorities have not heeded the lessons from the tragedy. As our special investigation reveals, Australia's most popular fire alarm, the one that's likely fitted in your home, is unlikely to save you. Tonight, the alarming truth. 6am and Jeremiah Lale is starting today as he does every day at the local cemetery. I get there early in the morning, wait for the security to open the gate. I spend my time with my kids. Thank you. Good morning, kids. Morning, Han. Going there, cemetery, sitting there. Hey. Talk to them, I know they're gone, but sometimes I feel they can hear me. Hey. For several hours each morning and again every evening, Jeremiah visits his family. Daddy need your help from you guys, huh? To talk and to sit with his wife and five children. At the cemetery, I'm sitting there crying. Keep talking to them. Tell them, I know you can hear me, but I can't hear you. You lost everyone? Lost everyone, everything. Everything. Jeremiah lost his family on the night of the 24th of August, 2011. The dawn light revealed a scene of devastation at this house in Slacks Creek, southeast Queensland. But it wasn't only Jeremiah's family claimed by the flames. Bless every one of us, Lord. We love you, Lord, from the bottom of our heart. The Taufer family was also devastated that terrible night three years ago. We miss our family. We love you. We ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Tracy and her dad, Tao, must now look after each other. Tracy lost her daughter, her mum, her sister, her auntie, two nieces and five cousins that night. Tao lost his wife, his daughter and eight grandchildren. I don't know how you even breathe with the level of grief you've had to endure. I have to stay strong for my father. Many times, you know, a lot of darkness, but he keeps me going. This is my daughter here. This is my mum. It's tough, isn't it? This was a family that spent every Friday night together. It was around midnight and Tao was still awake when he realised there was a fire in the house. And I saw this light in my, in my office. It looked like a mist of smoke come up at the floor. It looked like there's a fire. So I called out to my two son-in-laws, come down and help me. And I grabbed the house, tried to put the fire off. We thought that we were going to put it off. Within moments, the smoke has turned to roaring flames. Jeremiah is woken to his father-in-law's desperate screams. It's very dark, very dark and very hot. Smoking inside, you can't see, even can't see your hand inside the house. I called my wife's name, uh, Jeanette, and the kids, the name of my kids. I thought maybe they already outside when I jumped from the window. 
and I tried to come back to the house. The, the fires everywhere. Hey, fellas, K2 job. House fire, Wagons Belt Street, Slack Street. Big Lima 475, shall proceeding to Wagons Belt Street from station. Sergeant Jacinda Panowitz was in the first police car to arrive on the scene. The, the smoke is, is so acrid and, and thick, it takes you a while to adjust and focus. Um, definitely the biggest fire I've ever been to. It was the early hours when that fatal fire broke out. Woman's voice desperately screaming, my children, my babies. 14 people, including eight children, were inside at the time. Sergeant Panowitz soon found Tao sitting in the gutter outside the blazing home. He just said, that's my house. I, I can't find my family. Uh, remember, we went through the, well, who's your family? How many people? How old are they? and he just kept talking and the, the names kept coming and we hit 11. And um, I, I just remember, can you, you say again, I, 11, are you talking about 11? The last of the bodies were recovered early this afternoon. As a van carrying another body disappeared, the first of many goodbyes. <laughs> Out of the ashes, unbearable grief. <laughs> unimaginable loss and also a heartbreaking lesson. It can make the difference between surviving and dying in the fire. It can make that much difference. David Isaac is Australia's leading fire safety expert. He, like so many, was horrified by the Slacks Creek tragedy, but he certainly wasn't surprised. There are two types of smoke alarms. This one is a photoelectric, and this one is an ionisation. They look the same, they feel the same, they cost about the same. This is the one that's in more than 90% of Australian homes. In fact, it's probably the one in your home. Mm. Coming up, there's smoke. That's really toxic. But no alarm. I'm gonna have to get out of here now how $50 could save your family. And sleep easier. And wake in the morning alive. So what are authorities waiting for? What will it take to save lives? Well. That's next on 60 Minutes.